Grace, did you take that? We are. Very friend, John. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, I apologize for the extended break, but we were having some technical difficulties in the courtroom that have now been resolved. Um, you may proceed. Thank you, Ron. Okay, good morning, sir. When we took a break, I was asking you your, your memory of the question that Mr. Benitez asked you, and um, I think what you said was you didn't remember the question specifically. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. But um, leading up to that, we had talked about the fact that you had listened to the tape in the mayor's office in Sanford sometime a couple of weeks before. Would you agree? Yes. And that was with all the other family members? Yes. And the civil attorneys representing the family, ben, civil attorneys representing the family, um, Ben Crump and Natalie Jackson, correct? Yes. Okay. You actually listened to it more than once. That day, I listened to it at least twice, correct? Yes. Okay. And it was even played for other family members more often than twice, right? I'm Why not aware there? of that. Okay. You don't recall whether or not you had listened to it between the first two times you heard it in, this, in the mayor's office and your conversation with Mr. Benitez? I don't remember, yeah. I don't remember. Uh, it was, of course, available to you, correct? What do you mean by that? Well, at that point, the city of Sanford made the decision to release the calls to the general public, right? Um, I don't remember, but I, I never had the tapes myself. Okay. So. Did there ever come a time in between the first two times that you heard it and your conversation with Mr. Benitez that you wanted to listen to it again but couldn't? Say it again. Okay. In the two-week period between the first two times you listened to it and the time you talked to Mr. Benitez about that, during that period of time, did you ever ask someone to listen to it again and be denied? No. So in your mind, listening to it the first two times was what you needed to hear, correct? Uh, not what I needed, but I didn't want to listen to them again. Okay. And yet, your answers earlier remained the same, of course. You said what you said to Mr. Benitez about not being sure who it was on the tape, correct? Yes. And though you said a moment ago that you didn't want to listen to it more, you actually have listened to it many more times since, haven't you? Yes. Okay. Was there a reason why in between the, the first two weeks you didn't want to listen to it, but were okay with listening to it 10 or 15 times afterwards? Yeah, uh, it's emotional. I didn't want to listen to them again. But you have listened to it at least 10 times since, correct? Yeah, well, no, in total 10 times. Okay. So if that was two, maybe eight separate occasions. Okay. Now, you said a moment ago that um, you lived in uh, the house with uh, Sabrina Fulton and um, Trayvon Martin, correct? Yes. Um, Tracy was not living there at that point, though, correct? No. 
So when you say that you consider Tracy Martin to be your dad, he actually left the home a long, long time ago, correct? Yes. They how, got... how old were you when he actually left the home? I'm guessing nine or ten. And that would have been put Trayvon at approximately what age, Trayvon Martin? If I was nine, he might have been five. You, um, the two of you um, didn't really hang out together, did you? You and Trayvon Martin? Yes, but I mean, it depends what you're talking about. Okay, you didn't have the same friends, correct? Mm -hmm. So that if you were to go out somewhere, you might go out and do something with your set of friends and he would go out and do something with his set of friends. Correct. Certainly as brothers, I think you said, you would do things together, whatever that might be, correct? But you didn't run in the same circles, did you? No. Um, you didn't interact with him on Facebook? Not really, no. Uh, nor on Twitter? No. But you did interact, of course, with your other friends and uh, on those social media sites, correct? Occasionally, yes. I'm going to have a moment, Your Honor. And um, when Tracy Martin left the home, he actually got remarried, didn't he? Yes, some years later, yes. And it was Trayvon Martin then spending a lot of time, the new wife was Alicia, correct? Yes. Okay. Did you spend a lot of time with your dad over at that house? Yes. Okay. And did Trayvon Martin as well spend a lot of time over at that house? Yes. He was more living there a lot of the time in the last few years, wasn't he? Um, not really. What do you mean by that? He, uh... Well, how it went, let me see, I guess growing up, we usually spent the weekends over there or whenever we wanted, I guess, we could go over. And towards the end, I don't know, it, it was about the same. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Can you redirect? Thank you. Mr. Fulton, you were asked about um, listening to that 911 call with your brother's screams on it for the first time at the mayor's office. Was that emotionally difficult for you to hear? Yes. Were you still sort of in denial about your brother's death at that point? Yes. And then you don't recall listening to that tape again between the time you heard it at the mayor's office and the interview that you were asked about. Is that what, what you're saying? Yes. All right. But you did tell the interviewer that you would like to think it's your brother's voice, but you weren't completely positive. Is that what you told him? Yes. And then, and then since that time of the interview, you had an opportunity, you said, eight, possibly more times to listen to it? Yes. Do you now believe it's Trayvon Martin's voice yelling for help on the tape? Yes. You were asked about um, growing up. Uh, how old were you approximately when um, your mother, Sabrina Fulton, and Tracy Martin divorced? About nine. And as I understood uh, what you said after that point, you primarily lived with your mother, but you would visit um, Tracy Martin on the weekends? Yes. And any other time you wanted to? Yes. And would Trayvon go with you uh, to Tracy Martin's house to visit? Yes. You, you now go to FIU, correct? Yes. Where did you go before that? Did you go to a different college? Yes, I went to FAMU. And where was that located? Tallahassee. All right. When you were at FAMU in Tallahassee, would you come home and stay with your mother and Trayvon Martin? Yes. Were there occasions that Trayvon Martin, your brother, went to visit you in Tallahassee when you were in school there? Yes. Okay, but back in, I guess, the fall of 11 and the 
the first months of 2012, you were actually at FIU back in Miami. Yes. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. May um, Mr. Fulton be excused? Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much, sir. You may be excused. State, please call your next witness. Uh, State would recall Sabrina Fulton. <clears throat> yes, and um, Ms. Fulton, you're still under oath, so we don't need to swear you in again. Please approach.
I apologize, but we need maybe five minutes. So if you'll please put your notepads face down and follow Deputy Jarvis back into the jury line. Please be seated. Um, yes, you may. Please be seated. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You may proceed. Yes, you may. Ms. Fulton, I'm going to show you part of uh, State's Exhibit 149. And do you recognize um, this button here? Yes. And is this a button that your son always wore, Mr. Trayvon Martin always wore? Yes. Thank you. No further questions. Any cross? No, thank you, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. May Ms. Fulton be excused? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, thank you very much, ma'am. Call your next witness, please. May we call Dr. Bow? 